Hello, Jermaine here, and welcome to the continuation of our series whereby we're exploring Dart and MongoDB. Now, in the previous video, what we did was we wrote a basic RESTful API, which acted as a gateway to our Mongo collection. This endpoint was accessible via slash people. And then once you access that endpoint, you're able to perform um, various operations on our people collection in our MongoDB database. Now, if you haven't watched part two, I'd recommend going back and watching it. We're going to be refactoring our logic into a controller class, which, which will be responsible for handling the communication with our people collection. Let's get started. To simplify the code we write, we're going to install the HTTP server package. So this provides a set of utility classes for working with HTTP servers, essentially. So this is um, this was written and it's maintained by the Dart team. So I'm going to come here and copy this as a dependency. And to install it, we will come to our pubspec.yaml file and then we'll add it here as a dependency. And once I save it, you can either run pubget in the terminal or if you're using the Dart extension for Visual Studio Code, um, this command runs automatically. And once it's finished, we're going to come to our main.dart and import it like so. The way we're going to use this is I mentioned that we are going to transform our request body. Over here we do server.transform and then we we pass in an instance of HTTP body handler, which essentially transforms the request body. The object type is HTTP request body. And that means this becomes, well, I'll set it to rec body to represent the request body. So that automatically affects um, how we, how we retrieve our request. And it's just as straightforward as rec body dot request. I'll do that here request and do that here as well change that here as well and i'm going to leave these because we're going to be moving all of these away from here anyway uh, so in fact let me comment let me comment this bit and then um, and do this so i'm just going to save this file and test it out just to ensure that just want to make sure our app still runs so i'm going to kill okay we still get hello world do slash people we still get our results from Mongo. Of course, my Mongo server is running in the background. I am going to come to our lib folder now and we're gonna create a folder called our source SRC folder. And in here, we'll create our people controller class. And then I'll come back here to our dot Mongo file, get rid of that. I'll in fact, give this a library name I'll call it that Mongo. And then I'm going to export source people controller dot dart. So this file. So what we're going to do next is build out our people controller class. So in this file, I'm going to import the packages we're going to need. So I'll copy that and paste that in here. And then we'll create our, our people controller class. And I'll define a couple of, um, instance properties so we need the http request body i'll set that to i'll call it rec body and then we'll de declare some final variables so one will capture our http request then one captures our our database collection i'll call it store and we need to initialize these variables so in our constructor we're going to require going to pass in the request body and also we'll pass in a reference to our database. And then in the initializer section for our constructor, we will define our request. And then we define a reference to our store, which is our people collection. All right. Next, what we'll do is we'll define a handle method, which will essentially resolve requests that get passed to this controller. So I'll mark this as a sync and then I'll use a switch and then based on the request method if it's a get request we are going to going to await on a method called handle get 
and then we'll break from that. I'll define that method marked as a sync. And then in here, we will write out our response. And then we are going to query our collection for all the items and convert it to a list. So let's save this. And we have to make sure to close the response. And lastly, we actually need to invoke the handle method. So let, let's test this one out and see what that gives us. So I'll come back to main.dart. I'll comment this out. And if it's people, I'll create a new instance of people controller. And then we'll pass the request body here. And we'll pass a reference to our database. So DB defined here. And the reason why we're prefixing this because we've namespaced our import as that Mongo. Uh, but just to simplify things, I'll just get rid of that. You can do it that way. Um, this also works. So either way would work. I'll leave it as, as this. Save this. And now let's, let's test this out. So I restart the server and then I'm going to curl to HTTP localhost 8085 ah okay we've got an exception okay we've got a bad state stream sync is closed right comment this bit out and let's try that again okay there we go yeah so the problem was with this line that this line needed to be commented because in our people controller we're closing the response here so now we have a essentially a blueprint um, to to continue working with our request i am going to continue here by adding a case for post essentially which will be similar to what we've done with get and i'm just going to speed this up and add cases for the other methods and then for our default we will set the status code to 405, which means that if any of the methods do not match, 405, I believe, means method not allowed. And I'm just going to define um, these methods. OK. So now we've got just a basic shell, essentially, of how our controller would handle the items in our database based on the request. So for our post request, what we want to do is effectively do request response right. And I'm gonna await install.save. And then all we need is the body property from our request body. And I'm just gonna test this out. So uh, let's test this using Postman. So if I perform a get, yeah, that gives us all of that. And now I, I'm going to perform a post and yeah, ensure the content type is application JSON. And then the body of our request would be this item. So let's send this across. And we have an OK response and a 200 OK return. So that looks like we were successful. Just to test it out, we'll do a GET request. And if I hit send and we scroll down to the bottom, we can see that our entry has been added. And also if we try a method that is unsupported, we should get a 405 method not, not allowed as is configured here. So let's come back here now and let's handle the other types of requests that we've got. So we've got a handle put request. So the way I expect this to work is um, we need to retrieve, retrieve the ID from our query string. Then secondly, we need the item in our collection to perform the put operation on. Let's do a search for it. Store find one where the ID matches this ID. And what we'll do is We'll have a condition if item to put is equal to null. That means it doesn't exist. So then we're going to save this item. So which is our request body. 
else if it exists already we're going to update or replace rather this item so do rec body dot body so let's test this out open my postman and we'll perform a put request at this location and I made sure to specify the ID and I will say Jermaine put here and let's send our cross okay we got 200 okay and what happens when I do a get request uh, of course this has, doesn't matter we're not using it in our get request so I should be able to come all the way down here and then yeah we see our change made so it's placed essentially replaced um, this item in the database with our new object so if I set this to 102 it should add a new entry because 102 doesn't exist that's oh wait that's a get so if I do a put to id 102 it saves it and then if I do a get we get what we was there previously but then we get our new entry here id 102 Jermaine put here all right so let's look at how we delete we do something similar to this actually we'll grab the id from the query parameter and then we write out our response and then we'll await the deletion of our item and also we need to search that item we need to find that item once we found the item we can pass it in here save that and let's try that out so perform a delete request we're not bothered about what's here restart the server first perform our delete request we have an okay response and if we do a get yeah, we should find that the entry is not there anymore 102 is gone so let's look at how we would perform a patch request so that's essentially similar to what we have here I need to issue a warning uh, with this with this bit of the code so with store dot remove if the item doesn't exist in the store that means that null will be passed in here and once null gets passed in here this operation will delete every single item in our collection so let's protect ourselves by checking that item to delete is not null so now that protects us now because if this is null and we pass in here store the remove would remove every single item in the collection and we don't want that all right let's check out our patch requests our copy these two lines because it's basically the same thing i'm going to be doing then we'll look at the item to patch and then what we want is quest response do dot write and then store the update we'll call the update method there will be item that we wish to patch and we don't pass in the body straight away instead we define a map and in that map we will define a raw string with the operation we want so this is the dollar set operation that mongodb understands and we're using r to mark this as a raw string because that does um, string interpolation if i get rid of that um, the dart analyzer thinks this is a variable which of course is not we use r to make it a raw string which will get past the mongo db and then um, we'll pass in the body of our request so doing this patch would update will not update the whole item but it will update a part of the item in our collection so let's look at how that works and then let's do a patch i will say jermaine patched and uh get rid of these bits so just to demonstrate that it only updates a subset of the item in our collection okay so if i send this across right sorry it's this comma let's run this again and let's do the patch okay so if i do a get request now and i send all of that it should say Jermaine patched so essentially we've got everything working now pretty much I'll clean up the solution a bit I'm going to move these imports from main.dart to dart mongo here 
and I will export it from here. So that means in main.dart, we just import dart mongo dot dart and then um, get rid of that. So yeah, that looks much simpler. And don't worry about the screen squiggly line. If you want to resolve that, you could just do, you could just do that. So yeah, just to re quickly recap, our request body is essentially um, passed in as a stream. And then we're using the HTTP body handler, uh, which is a stream transformer. So that'll transform the body of the request. We return a request body object, which essentially contains the payload um, data in there, um, but also contains details of our request. Um, so we look at a path of our request and dependent on the path, if it's slash people, we create an instance of our people controller, and then we pass the request in there, which gets handled by this um, controller. And in here, we call the handle method, which will handle the request dependent on the method. Each of the methods we've defined essentially um, affects our collection one way or the other. So this brings me to the end of the video. I hope this was informative. I picked up something different. This code is available on GitHub. So do go and take a look, do check it out and test it out yourself. I do hope that you've been following along with me in this tutorial. The best way of learning is by doing. Do give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Also do subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so that you're updated when new videos are released. And if you've got any questions, let me know down in the comments and I will try my best to answer you. Thank you.